In just a moment, these guys are going to compete against each other and there are brownie points up for grabs. This is what the board looks like. Oh no, it's already starting badly! Jamie has eaten Barry's baked potato and we haven't even got to the intro yet. Are you kidding me? So it's all still to play for and this week the brief is tight. It's a loaded potato skin battle. Let's begin. So we're going skins or what? Would you like me to provide you with the backing track? You know what's great? It's potato brown bass. And you know what's also great? It's the burger, boy. I'm making loaded skin potato brown bass burgers. It begins by making my spicy tomato sauce. Let's go! <laughs> so I'm going to make what looks like a fairly standard tomato sauce, but I'm going to take it to the next level with some chilies and a splash of umami from some anchovies. I am making a full roast dinner, but I'm going to focus on the best part of the roast dinner, the potatoes. Crispy, beautiful roasted potatoes, skinned, and then putting the entire roast dinner inside of it. The best bit of a roast potato is the crispy outside. And to get that, little tip for you, cover a roast potato in polenta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my potatoes, skin them, and then cover the skin in all that polenta goodness and olive oil. That way I'm increasing the surface area and getting even more crunch to my potato. I really like the juxtaposition between the crispy um, outside of a roast potato and the fluffy middle, and I think the fluffy middle is the bit that really makes it. Yeah, but what if, what if you replace the fluffy middle with steak? I've recently discovered a new social media platform, and you've heard it here first, Pinterest. So I'm going to make something specially tailored for that brand new social media platform, Potato Skin Roses. Comes with an amazing red sauce, an amazing green sauce, they're both unbelievable. Putting it together will be tricky, but if I get it right, the flavours and the delicate construction should win me this battle. So first step for me is cut these potatoes lengthways, scoop out the middle, cut the skins lengthways again, then I'm going to toss them in butter, onion granules, oregano, salt, pepper, and then a little bit of cheese. Grid some parmesan. Let's talk about skins. I'm going to take my skins and use them as buns. Bum skins. Yes, they're going to become my burger bun. To do that, we're going to hollow them out. We're going to put some smoked paprika around it for that Spanish flair. We're going to add some sesame seeds on the top so they look like buns. We're going to bake them and then we're going to fill them with some cheese, manchego and cheddar, and some chorizo. Pow! So I've got some beautiful rainbow carrots on the go. And now it's time to focus on, well, for me, my favourite part of this, which is the Yorkshire pudding. First, you want to create a really simple batter. That's eggs, milk and flour into a bowl. Get that whisked up and then you want to focus on your moulds. These are Dariel moulds. Dariel moulds? Didn't he sing that song Colourblind? That's Darius. Hit me one more time. Right. That's a very, very niche joke. X Factor 2003. <laughs> UK version. X Factor? It was pop stars. Pop Idol. Pop Idol. It's right, pop right. Idol. <laughs> you want to fill these up with a teaspoon of some beautiful beef dripping and get them into an oven and get it absolutely piping hot. Once it's piping hot, bring it out of the oven and stick in your batter a third full and then back in and it will rise beautifully to the top of your dish. So Mike, are you going for really thin skins? Fat skins. Jay, are you fat skins or just big boned? Okay. Right, next thing I've got to do is put some smoked paprika all over my uh, potato skins. We need to take a long, hard look at each other because he's leading. I don't understand that. No. He's handicapped, isn't he? Yeah, so. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? He's got a handicap, he's not handicapped. The, the state of play that we find ourselves in mm -hmm. is that Ebers has such low expectations when it That's comes to him. Meant. All he has to do is create something that is a dish. Yeah. Oh, you and Ben's like, there. wow, well, well, done. well done. It's like, I'll put that on the fridge. Well done, have a brownie point. Umami. <laughs> Okay, this is where it all kicks off at once. No! Don't. My Yorkies are about to go in the oven, but before I do that, I've got to focus on my steak. I'm going to cover in oil and salt and pepper, then get it into a pan, fry on both sides, then let that rest. While that's resting, I'm going to start making a really quick and easy gravy. Oh, Butter. Oh, no! Time. Flavour. 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 Part of the flavour. Get in there, flavour. Get in there. I might be, I'm scared I may have forgotten about the flavour in the last minute and now I'm scared of overcooking the um, steak. Come on, get in there flavour. Just 
Too late, the flavour's gone, mate. Flavour's gone. He's packed his bags, he's out of there. Mr and Mrs Flavour have divorced, they're out of here. Oh, I really hope that's pink inside still. Nope. Oh. Bit of flour. Then in with my beef stock. Now the gravy's all bitty, now I'm panicking. Mustard. What have you done? I've panicked, I've what made... Have you done? <laughs> Baz, there's a chance I might have some flavour to spare. Do you want any? Now, my next step is to grease my tins with the remaining butter. Where's your butter gone? Exactly. You ate it, didn't you? I have not eaten your butter. Can I have one dig of your butter? One dig of butter. You can, take it, you can go two, two dig of Two dig? You experimental swine. Now I need to cover the bottom in my remaining potato middles, mash it down so it creates a base for my roses. Line four overlapping each other. And then we roll them. And then I save one of those and one of these for the outside. And what you can hear now is the sound of two people realizing that they've just lost the battle. Let me take you to Burger Town. Welcome to Burger Town. Now, I'm going for a slightly different burger. This burger for my Spanish-inspired dish is going to be a Swedish meatball recipe. Yeah, I know, but it's slightly adapted. It's got a bit of chorizo in there, but it means it's also got pork, it's got beef, it's got breadcrumbs that have been soaked in double cream. It's amazing. Baz. Yeah, man. Do you remember when this happened. Paella burrito. It's gonna have a simple traditional paella base, then we're gonna to top that off with the flavors of chicken and chorizo soaked in red wine. Oh, and then this happened. Yeah? So if you destroy a nation's dish and it makes the media, hey, do it, it again. Do it again. <laughs> have you burnt your carrots as well? Nearly burnt my carrots. Well, the thing is, they're supposed to be rainbow carrots, but they're all the same colour now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have to put like some fried potatoes in there just so it... Stop it! What no I'm just saying if you have some fried potatoes, flavour oh no. Oh no. Right. No. <laughs> oh <laughs> that was in my right. <laughs> Shallot's fired! Whoa! Oh no. Oh hello, oh, hi. <laughs> Let me just oh. have a look at it. Oh no. <laughs> to be fair, I think there's more flavour in here than there is in Barry's dish. <laughs> Oh, they do look good. No, actually, they do look pretty good. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, mental. <laughs> so my red sauce is essentially a tomato sauce, but it's got some amazing twists. It's got things like chicken stock, and it's got that's it, chicken stock. But the chicken stock makes it taste really good. And some basil. Boom. It's all up there. Now the important thing is you want a nice slow blend so you really get it. <laughs> Wah! That's good. That could be smoother. That needs to be smoother! It... You had your chance at the blender. Ben brought a bowl over to put it in there. Well you can put it in Ben's bowl then, can't you? <laughs> One of the favourite parts of the Tatas Bravas is the aioli that goes with it. Some people call it aioli, but they're wrong. All it is, mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, garlic, boom, done. Where have you put the lid? Why do you think I've taken the lid? Because you are a mischievous little sausage and you would have done that. Happy now? Yeah. Don't finger my potatoes. I've been wanting to do this green sauce for... <laughs> Washed up. Green sauce is essentially basil, parsley, and spinach. Cream, water, cheeky squeeze of lemon, just to increase my chances. Obviously, Barry's left his carrot pan out, but they look quite tasty, so I'm gonna fry my pancetta in all of his juices.
I'm feeling the pressure. Do you know what? So One I of the closest so ever. We and I haven't even tried them yet. Three brown dishes. They are so brown. <laughs> I think that's part of the territory with potatoes. I'm going to start at this end. It looks great. I mean, before I even cut into it, it looks like a rose. I'm going to go for a little bit of green, a little bit of red, and a little bit of pancetta. I have to say, that is great. That is really, really great. By cutting it and shaping it in that way, you get lots of crispy bits. Mm. You get the gratination of the cheese. You get the heavy on garlic but the freshness of the basil. Clever. Whoa. So straight off the bat, this one looks like it belongs on the Ooh. rustic oak table of a gastro pub with a fire roaring in the corner, and that is attractive. The aim was to be canapé style, but... No, it's not a canapé. It. <laughs> it's not a canapé. Go on, Jay, I, I really... I rate you if you do that. Oh, oh no. He's dribbling over his own dish, actually. <laughs> is it good gravy? Because it could be improving it. Oh man. A light, fluffy Yorkshire that's crispy around the edges. Amazing steak. And after all, it's the loaded skin we're judging here. And that is one particularly well loaded skin. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have loaded much more onto that, and it all tastes great. And the horseradish. Mm -hmm. And now this is equally clever as this, as in it looks like something it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. That looks like a rose. This looks like a burger bun. You've got the sesame seeds. You've got the burger. Oh my God, <laughs> how dense that up. is. Okay, <laughs> so the brief is loaded potato skin. This is a double loaded potato you skin, sandwiched more. with an awful lot of Spanishness. Oh my word. I tried some of that sauce earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that sauce may, is warm. May have picked up the hot smoked paprika by accident. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> It's got a reaction, mate. That's what you want to do. Mike, are you having some? Mate, flavour's uh, no. flipping out. Conceptually, that is delicious. It's very clever. The sesame seeds with the cheese and the chorizo in the skin. Oh. And then a burger in the middle. Aioli and tomato sauce. Incredible. However, it's been Jamie fried on the chilli. No. And I think it spoils it. This week, the brownie point goes to the dish that I think was the most fully loaded skin on the table. It belongs in a pub, it tastes delicious. It's this one. Oh. Absolutely love roast dinner in a skin. But I agree with Ben. <laughs> of course you do. Ne this week he does, this week he does. Oh. It's not up to me though, you oh. guys get a vote as Ben's well. So check now. on the poll on oh. YouTube and give a like to Mike, Barry or Jamie, depending on your choice. Turns out. I'm back in the lead. Well, not the lead. <laughs> You're I'm, definitely I'm, not I'm, in the lead. I'm, I'm definitely not losing, that's the main thing. No, but it does turn out there is such a thing as too much flavour. You probably know the three things we're going to ask you to do. Number three. one, ring that bell. Number two, subscribe. Number three, mm. there are so many options. Like the video. Yeah, one, two, yeah, that's fun. With that one. See you soon. Bye. Click on the left if you missed our last video, or click on the right video for one of our favourites.